In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the best defense in Man 23. No, wait, I already did that video, but I forgot to tell you one thing. How to stop every single shotgun run in Madden 23. That is, of course, clickbait. I'm not going to go through every single run in Madden 23 and show you how you can defend it. I'm going to go over the three main runs that a lot of people are using. HP base, or just base, whatever. Uh, then inside zone and 01 trap. I always keep forgetting the names. I'm going to start off with the main defense. And for this, we have to go back to the video that I already made on this. So we're going to sub out auto press and then sub them back in. Then we're going to go to the safeties package. And I'm going to show you the coverage once. And then we're going to go over it. What the safeties package does is it gives you special hot routes or adjustments. You can put the steep safety in outside third left. Outside third right. E uh, excuse me. Outside third right even. And you can get very creative. For this we're just going to baseline press our safeties in deep thirds. Put X into a middle third. And that's it. That's going to be our base defense. Show it once. Now let's get into how to shoot all the gaps. And we have to rely on gap shoots. Which I know a lot of people are not comfortable with, but if you practice this enough, there's a little shortcut that I can give you uh, that will make this a lot easier. Let's start off. Which one should we start off with? Let's start with base. Halfback base. I'm going to come out in DB Fire 2. Baseline press. Going to set up my defense. Only going to set this up once. This is how it looks. I just like to put this X guy into a vert hook. You can also man him up if you want to. That's another option you have, but I'm going to keep him. Uh, excuse me. I'm going to keep him in this vert hook. Then let's look at how the run halfback base actually works. You see that there's a pulling guard, McDaniel, right here. He's gonna, once the ball is snapped, reach around to block or to lead block for the running back. This is, of course, a weakness because now we open up this gap and that is exactly what we're going to attack. So I'm gonna move my Sky Hendricks in a step, in a couple of steps maybe, and then I'm going to press X, flick the right stick up so we are in man coverage. Now I can man up with anyone. But more importantly, now if I move this left stick, you see that we're locked in. We're not going to move. That's great because now I can hold R2 and put the left stick down. So now as soon as I snap the ball, whenever, I just get the perfect jump, which means that I can get in the backfield and miss the tackle because that's always great when, do when you're doing a YouTube video. You want to miss the tackle. I'm not going to make all the adjustments again. Just baseline press. Move this guy Hendrix in a step. Now we're going to snap the ball. And you see how if I don't get in, then I'm blocked. But this, this kind of is a ripple effect so that the outside guy is then uh, not going to be blocked. So we're going to try this again just to like make sure that I can shoot this gap. Actually, I don't know why we're playing so weird. Like I would like to shoot this gap. It's messing everything up. So you see we get in. But I would like to actually shoot the gap. Maybe step in a little less. Snap the ball. Perfect. We see we get picked up. And that means that the run gets stopped by the outside guy. I want to get a gap shoot though like this is kind of maybe not move up as much yeah but now i'm a little late i don't know what's happening but we see we get the we get all the tackles like that's important when you start when you're playing these running backs it is important to not maybe this should be better yeah that's better uh, it is important to stop them before they get going because they're so fast they're so physical keith Byers especially is a great running back recommend you guys pick him up by the way but he is, of course, a nightmare to face, which is why it is important to get to stop these guys before they get going. That is how you stop base from the regular alignment. Now let's talk about the pinch alignment. What's the difference between the baseline press and the baseline pinch? Well, if we baseline, then press R1, left stick down. You see how we are pressed, the D-line pinches and the linebackers pinch. Now, if I move in just a little bit, a little bit on the outside hip of our defensive end and lock in again, and just shoot straight down you see how we get in or the cornerback gets in that is another way that we can look to defend this uh this run so for example we're going to come in here we're just going to go straight down and now you see how we shoot in and if we don't shoot in then the cornerback gets it it is kind of weird that we're getting picked up all the time because this is not really a thing like this is what uh, all of the pros are doing to stop the run they're just using these gap shoots but some of the time it doesn't work apparently really weird stuff that is why i love this game because of its consistency of course now let's shoot in again actually right there they did a pretty good job blocking i don't know if they're gaining resistance or what's happening but right there that was pretty good blocking uh, all things considered so once again lock in snap the ball you see we get sheds we crowd the middle of the field that's the way to stop halfback base from the pinch alignment let's get into the next play which is going to be 0-1 trap by the way guys if you're new to the channel and you like what you're seeing so far 
I would really appreciate a subscription. Only 20% of my viewers actually subscribe. If you want to do this and support me, this would help me a lot. Let's now go over O1 Trap. Sorry for the interruption. I don't know who that guy was, but I gotta say, he's got some pretty nice hair. He probably went to the barber shop pretty recently. Now for this, we only are going to use the pinch alignment just because this is a pretty good run. All, honestly, like it's, it's a pretty decent run because what this does is if we look at it, we have this guard pulling over to the right just like with half deck base but now this center is kicking out to the left which means that the user is going to get picked up if we just attack the gap that is vacated so for this we're just going to baseline pinch but because this is so nice we're going to lock in and we're just going to shoot down if we're sending five people at the quarterback so if we're blitzing our slack cornerbacks then just doing this will be enough if we get picked up then another guy comes in free that's always going to be the mentality you guys if we get picked up then someone else comes in free once again we're going to do this snap the ball you see this time we we don't get picked ups but the other guy gets picked up so we come in free one more time just to show you all the, <laughs> all good things come in threes is the proverb that we use in german you see we get the step number 19 is supposed to block us right there he's just not fast enough He's just a little behind today. So we're gonna make our adjustments, then lock in. And you see, if we don't miss right there, uh, which I absentmindedly, absentmindedly just did, uh, then we got we got the perfect defense for this. Literally just baseline pinch. You see, I get in, I make the tackle. If you have something like inside stuff in your defensive tackle, which I have on Tony Sirigusa, then <laughs> there you go, that makes it even better. But that is how you stop 0-1 trap. Now the final run that we're gonna go over inside zone inside zone you're mostly going to face out of a trip set for this one i'm going to show you once again the baseline press and then the baseline pinch for the baseline press what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh the linebacker that is on the side that the ball is going to be run towards and move him in this spot right here maybe even just just like so don't put him out there because then you're not going to get in in time but right here should be enough then lock in and then go in diagonally so right there i'm going to do this and you see how I get in with my linebacker and we get the tackle for a loss. So once again, baseline press, move this guy out here. And once again, the same mantra really applies. Oops, excuse me. The same thing applies if we do a good enough job. Uh, if you know what? And again, the same thing applies if we're sending five people at the quarterback. This makes the run defense better. Because if we if we get picked up, then someone else is not getting picked up. It's right there. That was my canes. They actually look pretty bad right there. I feel like the offensive line is gaining some resistance, which makes them block better. But right here, I'm just going to lock in, try to get inside the backfield. We get blocked pretty well right there. Maybe try a different run. I don't know why this is blocking it so well right now all of a sudden. Uh, let's go into try offset. If they flip the run, of course, then we're going to flip what we're doing. So we're going to, that Hendricks, we're going to go right here and then try to shoot down. As right there, you see, uh, he actually falls forward, but we get the tackle. Pretty nice stuff. Once again, let's actually try this from this run again. Right here, move him in this spot, then snap the ball. And now you see, if we don't get in, then the cornerback is going to get in. Pretty nice stuff. Let's now talk about the pinch look. For, so for this, we're going to go baseline and then pinch. And now we're going to use the other linebacker. So we're going to slant our D-line to the, into the direction that the inside zone will be going into. And we're just going to shoot straight down. We're really trying to be aggressive and try to either get the gap shoot or if we, don't, if we get picked up, then someone else is going to come in free. I want to point out, though, that for the gap shoot from all the way out here, if we only send uh, one of the cornerbacks, then now if I lock in, you will see how we get absolutely destroyed actually right there. But you see how we get blocked. Like that is when the targeting actually applies. Whereas if we just do it like this, this should not, we should not get picked up. So we're gonna try this right here. You see, we don't get picked up. We just have better penetration overall. And even though that gap shot didn't look too great right there, because we're running to the strong side of the offensive line, you can see that we have got all guys with abilities. Like they're just gonna do an amazing job power cleaning everybody. Uh, but because we have so many bodies there, we get the penetration, uh, and that's it. I forgot, uh, so my bad. I wanted to run the, I wanted to actually, let's call it a different play. I wanted to show you once again the pinch, uh, the baseline pinch. So we're going to baseline pinch and then just slant our D-line so that the arrows point the way that the run is going. Then, excuse me, and then lock in, snap the ball, and now we're going to try to, just like, there's nothing for them to run into. Like, I mean... There is something for them to run into, and that's our defense. Like, we just, there is nothing for them uh, to really gain yards. Snap the ball again. Just penetrate, penetrate. The back the backside could be open, 
But because we got the cornerback there, he's usually going to do a fine job of covering uh, all that up. That is it for the inside zones. I forgot to show you how to stop the run or the 0-1 trap. 0-1 trap. If you're only sending three people, for example, if you're running cover four drop contain, you're going to go baseline pinch. Now, here's what I recommend you to do. Lock in, but loop around the center just like so. That's where you're going to loop around to. This is not as easy as the other one, but you see, if you do the loop around properly, even just rushing three people, you should be good. So once again, baseline press, you see we have the QB contain angles. I want to test if that changes anything. So now we're going to snap the ball. Actually, it really doesn't. Like the loop is still there. It's a smaller window. For example, let's just compare it to, uh, let's just compare it to if we're sending the slot blitzes and then I'm just gonna send these guys regularly. If now I'm gonna do this, this is just obviously, this is way easier. Like I just shoot straight down. I can kind of attack the guard sort of, uh, for example, I can just go right at McDaniel. I'm a 64 in the offensive line right there. But if I'm only sending three people, then I have to be a little bit better with my gap shoot. It's right there, I loop around. That is almost the easiest run to shoot, but you have to know precisely what you're doing. That's it, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like. If you hated it, also leave a like or leave a dislike. YouTube really doesn't care whether you like or dislike the video. Just engagement is important. Speaking of engagement, please write a comment, just anything. If you have a question, I can, of course, answer it in the comments. I love interacting with you guys. Also, you can check out my Twitter. Instagram is in the description. Just hit me up over there. Say hi. Always appreciate when I get people doing this. But yeah, I'm out of here. Till next time, peace.